Hey channel, before we get started, if there are any plant moms or dads watching these, I would really appreciate some insight. Uh, my green chiropractic assistant is dying very slowly, and I'm not ready to say goodbye to him anytime soon. I, anytime I'm not filming, I move him in front of the window. I make sure to give him enough water, but not too much to rot the roots out. So any insights or any thoughts, I'd really appreciate it. I'm not, I, I've grown quite fond of Yuki. I want to keep him. Yeah, I named my plant. I, I assume other people do that too. That's normal, right? Anyways, let's get into the video. This looks like an incredibly painful thing to do, but for some people, this is actually kind of comparable to their day-to-day -day lives. There is a self-diagnosis that I hear all too frequently in my clinic, with patients describing their foot pain as something akin to tearing, ripping, or even burning. From my own mother to seemingly everyone else's as well, this condition can turn everyday activities into a very painful experience. I'm speaking of the condition and diagnosis of plantar fasciitis, and in this video we're going to go through exactly what causes it and the best methods to both treat it and keep it from coming back. Education is king, so as usual we're going to be starting with the anatomy. The plantar fascia is a structure that exists on the bottom of our foot. Its primary function is to provide support to our arch. Plantar fasciitis, then, is the inflammation of this plantar fascia, most commonly beginning on the inside of the heel. This inflammation arises usually when the plantar fascia is irritated for a prolonged period of time, which is most commonly caused by a persistent and maintained lengthening or stretching of it. As a result of this persistent inflammation, pathological adhesions form within the connective tissue. And it's these adhesions that cause the signature crunching or ripping sound when walking. It's literally your fascia ripping itself back apart. But why might your plantar fascia be being overstretched to begin with? Well, it could be due to a reduction in the height of your arch. Once again, looking at the anatomy, the plantar fascia connects from the bottom of your heel to the heads of the metatarsals. That's what these highlighted bones are here. Now, stick with me on this one because the biomechanics can be a little confusing if you're not really experienced with the field. A reduction in the height of your arch spreads apart the distance from the heads of your metatarsals to the bottom of your heel. When we spread this distance apart, the plantar fascia too has to spread apart as it is connected to both of these structures. Kept on for long enough, this can bring on the inflammation, which then in turn can translate into plantar fasciitis. People with higher arches are naturally more predisposed to developing plantar fasciitis as they have a shorter plantar fascia because the natural distance between the heads of their metatarsals and the bottom of their heels is less to begin with. Therefore, they require less distancing in order for that stretch of the plantar fascia to occur. So then what causes the arch to decrease or collapse? One of two mechanisms, either excessive force pushing down the center of your arch or excessive force pulling up the sides of your arch. If you walk or run a lot, you are repeatedly putting forces down through the center of that arch. Now that does not mean stop walking or running, the definite health benefits that come with doing those activities definitely outweighs the possible risks associated with them. As well as you can likely imagine, if you are of a heavier build or overweight, the amount of force put down through your arch while walking or running is increased as compared to someone who is not. The more mass on our body, the more work our lower limbs, including our foot, has to do to support us while walking or running. As well, looking at the surrounding musculature, our calf muscles attached to the back of our calcaneus, or our heel, via the Achilles tendon, and our front shin muscles, known as the tibialis anterior, among other muscles, attached to our toes. These muscle groups work to pull the back of the heel, as well as the toes, up towards them respectively. If they are super hypertonic or tight, they also work to further flatten that arch and spread out the plantar fascia. All right, so now we kind of understand the biomechanics that are happening within the foot. What can we actually do to treat it? Now, one of the more common methods for treating plantar fasciitis is the introduction of a foot orthotic. The intention of this orthotic then is to obviously provide arch support to prevent that collapsing. And this makes a lot of sense because if we prevent that decrease with a literal object, we don't get the stretching of the plantar fascia. However, hold up just one moment. If you're visiting some sort of paramedic clinic, including chiropractic clinics or physiotherapy clinics, you will very likely be offered a custom-made orthotic. While these custom-made orthotics definitely do work for their intended purpose because they are molded after your foot, 
and many times they aren't actually necessary and usually come with a significant markup. Over-the-counter arch support orthotics are designed to fit the mid-range of arches, and as you can imagine, the majority of population falls within mid-range. Therefore, for most people, an over-the-counter orthotic will be just as effective as a custom-made orthotic in ensuring that their arch is supported. However, if you have either an exceptionally flat foot or an exceptionally high arch, the over-the-counter orthotics probably won't be sufficient for you. If you have a flat foot, taking an orthotic that has more arch supports than you have anatomically or naturally available to you will feel very uncomfortable and even painful. After all, why would you try to induce more support if you've never needed it before? This painful walking will inevitably lead to changes in your gait cycle, which is your walking cycle, and that can then lead to other lower limb complaints if not straight low back pain. Conversely, if you have naturally high arches, the arch support provided by the over-the-counter orthotics may not be a of a sufficient degree for you. Depending on just how decreased your arch is, they may help a little bit, but probably not as much as an orthotic that is specifically made to tailor to your increased requirements. For these reasons, if you have a very low arch or a very high arch naturally, you may want to bite that bullet on making a custom-made orthotic. But otherwise, over-the-counter, much cheaper and will probably be the way to go for you. In addition to just getting an orthotic in your shoe, it's also very important to A, eliminate the pathological adhesions that are forming within your plantar fascia, and B, modify or improve upon the biomechanics in your foot in order to stop the plantar fasciitis from occurring and hopefully prevent it from coming back. A, or eliminating the adhesions, is simple enough. In a clinic, a practitioner may use either their hands or a shockwave machine or a massage gun to release the plantar fascia. However, for you at home googling different things about plantar fasciitis, you've likely come across a towel stretch. Plantar fasciitis is usually worst in the morning after sleeping. As such, keep a towel nearby your bed and do as follows. Only do this stretch as much as needed to release the adhesions within your foot to decrease your pain levels while walking. Remember that plantar fasciitis is caused by a persistent lengthening and stretching of the plantar fascia. You do not want to continue stretching it any more than necessary to eliminate those adhesions, else you might actually be prolonging your condition. Once those adhesions are released, we need to change up our mindset. For B, modification of our foot biomechanics, we need to do anything we can to induce slack within our plantar fascia. This means that we need to loosen the muscles that pull up the ends of our arches, which are our calf and shin muscles, as well as tighten the muscles that actively pull our plantar fascia together, which include all of the very small intrinsic foot muscles that nobody really pays attention to. Loosening your front and back leg muscles is simple enough. Take that massage gun that you got for Christmas a few years back and run it up and down your legs. Quick aside, when you're doing the front shin muscles, obviously don't run the massage gun right up and down your tibia. That would probably hurt and be very uncomfortable. Instead, find your tibia or shin bone and snake just to the outside of it. There you can feel your tibia tibialis anterior muscle, and then feel free to run your massage gun up and down that. This tibialis anterior muscle in particular works to extend your toes, which involves pulling them up and backward. When it does this, it also spreads the plantar fascia apart by pulling it across the metatarsal heads. This relationship is referred to as the Windlass effect and is something that we are actively fighting against in cases of plantar fasciitis. To tighten the muscles that pull your plantar fascia together, take that towel that you just used and throw it on the floor. Actually, on second thought, maybe keep a hand towel nearby, a bath towel would be pretty big for this. Place your foot on the towel and then scrunch it up as much as you can using your toes. This engages all of our very rarely used intrinsic foot muscles, including our flexor digitorum, our quadratus plantae, and our lumbricals. Complete this exercise for 10 repetitions twice a day until your condition resolves, and then consider just keeping it up for good measure. And as mentioned earlier, if you suffer from plantar fasciitis and you are overweight, it is estimated that for every one pound of body mass lost, three pounds of force are taken off of your arches. Even losing a very small and manageable amount of weight five pounds can take a significant effect and load off of your arch. I fully understand that weight is a very complicated and sensitive issue for some. If you would like some more information on some basic nutrition principles for both losing and gaining weight, feel free to check out that video up there. In summary, plantar fasciitis is most commonly caused by a persistent lengthening of the plantar fascia. This lengthening can be caused by a reduction of your arch height, which in turn is caused by either too much force pressing down the center of your arch or too much force pulling up the sides. If you take the combination of an orthotic that is right for you, alongside resolving these symptoms and the root cause of your decreased arch, 
we're looking at a very favorable outcome. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. If this video helped you or someone you know and you have three spare seconds, please subscribe down below. It'll help me to have date night. I'm literally filming this video on Valentine's Day. I figure that feet is a pretty romantic topic, right? You can click here for the previous video or you can click here for the most recent one. Have yourselves great days.